Today, we turn our attention to the offense. Who's winning and losing the battles for the final roster spots on this Cardinals team so far this spring? This is Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Cardinals fans. I'm J.D. Haffern, and I'm a national radio sports anchor, born and raised in the Lou and a lifetime Cardinals fan, and I'm your host for Locked On Cardinals, part of the podcast network known as the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. You can follow me on Twitter at J.D. Sports Radio. You can follow the podcast at LO underscore Cardinals. want to thank those of you who make Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. We're also available on YouTube. Make sure you like and subscribe and comment. That way you can interact with us. Hit that notification button so you know when the new episodes are posted. This is a show serving Cardinal Nation and giving the best fans in baseball all of the info about the birds on the bat. Uh, it's Monday. The uh, What is today? The 13th? Yes, March 13th. Uh, the Cardinals enjoyed a day off today. Well, at least the guys who uh, aren't in the World Baseball Classic. And I thought today we could focus on some of the position players. We talked about the pitching staff uh, last time around. Because we've got some guys that um, have stood out offensively and are having very strong springs at the plate. And then there are the guys that uh, are on the other side of things who have struggled a little bit, haven't looked so good, and perhaps don't deserve a spot on this roster. And things fluctuate throughout the spring. So we've kind of done this every week and point out who's been doing good, who's bad, who's hot, who's not. You know how it is in the spring. Up and down we go. Uh, let's start with a guy who is definitely going to make this team is uh, coming off what was a surprising rookie year where he was a finalist for the Rookie of the Year Award. He was the winner of the Utility Gold Glove Award, and that's Brennan Donovan. And I don't know exactly what the drug testing uh, rules and parameters for Major League Baseball are, but I'm curious, how many times do you think Brendan Donovan has had to take a P test to prove that he's not on PED so far in the spring? Because of the, the power surge that this guy's going through. My goodness, our guy is tied for the lead in home runs in the spring. Tied for the lead. Not with the Cardinals or just the Grapefruit League side of things, but all of Major League Baseball spring training with four dingers. Four dingers for Brendan Donovan. You know who else has four, though, this spring? Just want to point this out. Uh, former Cardinal Edmundo Sosa. Okay, so... I'm not saying that Brennan Donovan is going to be the, the next coming of Mark McGuire and start swatting big flies left and right when the regular season comes around, but you've got to be encouraged by what Donovan has done at the plate so far this spring. You've got to enjoy it a little bit. He comes up there and you're like, thwap. And you're like, Brennan Donovan just hit another home run. Uh, he's batting 310 so far in the spring. He's got the four home runs, 10 RBIs, seven runs scored, has a couple of walks and an OPS of 1.079. Hell yeah, Brendan Donovan. We like to see that. Um, we keep talking about Nolan Gorman, and we talk about his power from the left side of the plate, and it, it appears to me that Donovan said, what's that? Gorman's the power hitter from the left side? Hold my beer. Uh, let me let me show you what I'm working with. Uh, John Denton at MLB.com just did a write-up about why this might be happening, and he credits doing something that fellow Cardinals player Paul Goldschmidt did last year and that was go down to the Marucci Clubhouse Sports Facility in Louisiana. And what they do there is the they dissect your swing. They do all these tests and stuff on you. They find the flaws that are going on in your swing and try to find ways to help you improve on what was a very good rookie season for Brendan Donovan. And according to Denton, the technicians found that due to Donovan's strong hand grip and powerful torso, that a heavier bat could be in play for Brendan Donovan. And it's the, the same type of bat. It's that hockey puck, not bat, that Goldie used last year. And he yeah worked out all right for him. Went on to win the uh, NL MVP award. So I would say he had great success with that. And the results have been quite nice this spring for Donovan so far. His exit Vila was up. The power is up. And this is not the only adjustment. He didn't just switch bats and just that, that was all he had to do. Uh, he also, according to Denton's article, tweaked his batting stance some and has uh, adopted a more upright stance in the batter's box and that's worked out for him as well 
throughout Donovan's career, uh, going back to college. He's never been a power guy. He's not a big guy. But you got to give him credit for taking the initiative to find new ways to improve on what was already a stellar start to his Cardinals career. I feel like uh, Ali should just take the whole team down there, like on a on a school trip, like a field trip for everybody. On your guys' way back from uh, Florida, how about this? On the way back from Florida, go over there to Louisiana real quick. Stop by this uh, Marucci complex. Let's get everybody tested and, and see what we can come up with and just have, you know, the whole team slugging away and being a bunch of all-stars up at the plate. I think that might be a, a good idea if they haven't done it already. Um, now, one of the things I want to bring up, too, is for, you know, with Brendan Donovan and these improvements that he's done, um, you've got that, which obviously you've seen results, and you've also got Nolan Gorman, who's had a pretty good spring so far. Now, until recently, he was smashing the ball all over the field. He was going opposite field. He's hitting him over the wall. Uh, but he's in a bit of a funk right now. And so far in his career, this is something that has kind of plagued Nolan Gorman as he's uh, very streaky uh, over his last eight with four strikeouts recently. So, but in all in all, you think about it, you've got a pretty good tandem over there at second base with Gorman and Donovan. And we know Donovan can play pretty much anywhere you want. So it's working out nicely. It really is. And, uh, but as far as your second base tandem, Pretty darn good one for the foreseeable future, especially here in 2023. Who knows what the future might bring when Mason Wynn comes up to shortstop and Tommy Edmonds ready to go back. To, I, who knows? We don't have to worry about that right now. Although Tommy Edmond is coming back to camp here. Uh, he, he was eliminated. Korea got eliminated from the WBC. So that means Tommy Edmond is going to be back at camp. Uh, I read somewhere that they're just going to kind of ease him back into things. Give him a couple days to, you know, get some rest and stuff after doing the World Baseball Classic. But uh, Tommy Edmond, we'll see him uh, at spring training here real, real soon. Uh, up next, I want to talk about the crowded outfield. We've got a crowded outfield, okay? We're going to head out there where we'll check on a couple of top 30 prospects in the Cardinals organization who have seen a lot of action lately because we've got outfielders who are in the WBC, and one of them seems to get be getting a little bit better while the other one seems to be regressing. We're going to find out who they are next on Locked on Cardinals. Now, these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available, and that's why you've got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster, and they do it for free, which is great because everybody loves free. Have you ever seen a crowd at any sporting event whatsoever, and they start shooting out the free t-shirts or they're dropping things at hockey games from the rafters and onto the crowd. People lose their minds for free stuff. And LinkedIn picked up on that and thought it would be a good idea to help you out for free as well. Now, the first thing you've got to do is put your ad together. You got to write it up the way you want it to sound. Then you add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. They've got simple tools like screening questions to make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus the leading competitors. And LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to. And they help you find them faster because this day and age, nobody wants to wait around. You want that person on your team right away. The guy or girl who's going to make all the difference in your workplace and uh, help your business grow. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MLB. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MLB to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. So the outfield situation is something where you have what I like to call a good problem. You know, you've got enough talented guys where you've got a very good battle going on between a group of dudes who want to fill that number four, number five spot on your roster. Tyler O'Neill, Lars Newfar, and Dylan Carlson are set. They're on this team. We don't have to talk about that at all. Uh, we don't know what positions they're all going to play, who's going to be in center field. I'm starting to bet on Tyler O'Neill taking over that center field job. It's just starting to trend that way, especially the way he's playing in Canada. Uh, had a hell of a game for the Canadian team on uh, Sunday. Went, went crazy uh, playing Team USA tonight on Monday night, by the way. Um, we've talked a lot about uh, Jordan Walker 
Jordan Walker continues to impress. 11 games. He's hitting 424, three bombs, seven RBIs, seven runs scored. He's got a stolen base. As of right now, I'm not sure how he doesn't make your roster. I don't, I don't know. You, you can use the excuses, I guess, that he's only 20. He's never played past double A yet. Uh, would likely see more at bats at triple A Memphis, but the guy has done everything you've asked of him, except for learning to slide feet first into bases. But we are working on that. We are working on that. Uh, he's looked good in the outfield. No complaints there. He's got a cannon for an arm. So far, he's just been better than everyone else who's competing for a spot out there in the outfield. And, I, and I'm talking about, you know, Juan Yepes as well. Like, he's just been better than everybody. And he deserves a spot on this roster. Will he get it? We'll see. We'll see. Uh, the guys I want to focus, though, here on this particular segment are your number five prospect, Alec Burleson, and your number 14 prospect, Moises Gomez. Now, last year, both of these guys just hit the snot out of the ball. Wherever they were playing, they just crushed it. Um, you're probably familiar with both of them, but if not, I've got, a, I've got a quick recap for you. For those of you who may not be familiar with them, Alec Burleson, uh, Burleson, 24 years old, 24 years old, left-handed slugger, who was the uh, John Olerud National Player of the Year finalist at East Carolina, got drafted 70th overall by the Cardinals back in 2020. And uh, last year at Memphis, all he did was hit 331 with 20 home runs and 87 RBIs at 109 games before he got called up late in the season. Had a monster year. Moises Gomez was uh, a prospect in the Tampa Bay Rays organization. Showed signs of power while he was with them, but the strikeouts became a little too much for the Rays to bear. They decided to release him. Uh, Cardinals scoop him up, and all he did was set a minor league record for home runs in the Cardinals organization with 39 last year, his first year with the Cardinals. Huge year, right? And uh, at Double A Springfield, 321, 23 home runs, 54 RBIs. Did that in 60 games, okay? Just shredded, just shredded Double A Springfield. Strikeouts, he's got a lot of those. 90 strikeouts uh, at Double A as well in 60 games. They promote him to Memphis. He plays 60 games there as well. Hits 266, 16 home runs, 40 RBIs. Strikes out 84 times. So in 120 games, in, a, in, a, in the full season last year for Moises Gomez in the minor leagues, it's 294, 39 home runs, drives in 94. He does strike out 174 times, which is astronomic. That's that's a huge amount of walking back to the dugout with nothing to show for it. So they're trying to cut down on that this spring. Hasn't really worked out yet. Uh, Burleson had a bit of an ankle issue uh, in the spring so far. Only appeared in nine games, 24 at bats. He's hitting 208, no home runs, three RBIs, five strikeouts. So nothing great, but I've seen him put together some good at bats here and there and uh, better ones more recently than he did at the beginning of uh, the spring. But still nothing all that good, which is unfortunate because you always like to have a left-handed bat on the bench for situations where you need a left-handed bat off the bench. Uh, I would give him a little bit of an edge in uh, winning a spot on the roster, in my opinion. As far as Gomez goes, he's appeared in 12 games, 29 at bats. He's hitting 241. Still no home runs, which is weird. He's only got one RBI, and he has struck out a team high 14 times. In fact, it got as bad as you can get <laughs> on uh, Sunday. Golden sombrero for Moises Gomez on Sunday. He whiffed all four times he came up to the plate. So you don't like to see that. Uh, neither one of these guys appears, at least in my opinion, to be ready to uh, make that jump to the major leagues. And barring any injuries, I would think they'd both start this year in Memphis. I think it would be good for both of them because I, I, I really don't want, like if I had to pick one right now to make the team, it would be Alec Burleson. But do you want him just riding the pine? I'd rather him down there at AAA, kicking butt, doing stuff like he did last year. Uh, Gomez, obviously, just look at the numbers, man. He's he's not ready. He's not ready. So you sit him down to Memphis, see if he can put together uh, more of the magic that we saw last year. But it's unfortunate because you were hoping, at least in the spring, that, that one of them would stand out a bit. And early on, Gomez, actually, he got off to a good start. Uh, was pretty darn hot, but then has come down to earth uh, big time. Three for his last 21. Still, again, no home runs, which is bizarre for a guy who hit 39 last year. Uh, no RBIs in his last 21 at-bats. Two walks and 12 strikeouts. So he's going the wrong way. The arrow is pointing down for Moises Gomez. And 
when all of these guys come back from the WBC, I say get him into the minor league camp because he's going to lose all the at-bats and he's just not ready. He's not ready. Uh, and I would also like to say that out of the two, I think I'm most disappointed in Gomez's performance because we haven't seen any of this power yet. He showed off last year in the minor leagues that he's got tremendous power. We talked to Gordon Graceffo, who was his teammate last year, and he's like, dude, he just hits tanks. It's it's incredible. And we haven't seen it yet. And Burleson had this ankle thing, but just hasn't shown much this spring that warrants for an opening day spot. And last year during his call-up, he didn't look ready either last year. So I think it would be both good to just go back down to Memphis, play every day, and eventually, when he, they're needed, you bring him back up. Now, Juan Yepes looks like he's ready to roll. Um, and it shouldn't surprise anyone that he deserves to be on this roster. After a slow start, he's now up to 258. He's got one home run, but he's knocked in eight, which is uh, trailing only Jordan Walker in that category. The defense is suspect. All right, well, the defense is not good out in the outfield. We don't like it so much. Um, instead, his role is more of a backup to Goldschmidt at first base and obviously DHing. Um, I think that's the place that you're going to use him the most. But if you're in a pinch, something happens, you can stick him out in one of those corner outfield spots. And more times than not, he's not going to kill you. Because last year when he was up on the team, he, did, he yeah, he doesn't track the ball all that. Well, he's not a good outfielder. But he didn't like fumble the ball and wasn't missing pop-ups and fly balls like he has in the spring so far. So you don't like to see that. You don't like to see that he's regressing as an outfielder. But if you break camp with O'Neill Carlson, Newt Bard, Walker, you can see where there's really not a room for you. Up has to be out there in the outfield anyway. You have him as your DH. You have him as the backup first base. But he can also play some third base if you need him as well. Um, so that would be his spot. Um, so I think he's safe. I think he's on it. Uh, speaking of Carlson, I know the batting average isn't where we want it to be. He's only hitting 208. Also dealt with some throwing arm fatigue this spring, but you got to be encouraged by the transformation of the body. He's added 12 to 15 pounds. We've talked about that before. And he's got two home runs this spring, and both of them from the left side of the plate, which was the bad side last year. Uh, he's driven in seven runs. He's also struck out 10 times, which you don't want to see in 24 at bats. He'll need to work on, uh, you know, putting the ball play a little more often than he does. But uh, Carlson, I've been pleasantly surprised at how much better he's done uh, hitting from the left side of the play, which was what we were all worried about. All right, next up, we take your comments and remarks from last week on Locked on Cardinals. Now let's talk about something that I'm a big fan of, and that would be Built Bar. Built Bars, if you haven't tried them yet, protein bar that are delicious, covered in 100% real chocolate, and they're not bad for you. That That's the beauty of this. You hear the words 100% real chocolate, and you're like, okay, so it's a, what is it, a candy bar? Why, why would I want all the sugars and stuff? That's the great thing about a Bilt Bar. They don't have all the sugars and stuff. They've got four grams of sugar, only 130 calories, but they come in with the 17 grams of protein, which is a good trade-off. If you're going to take in four grams of sugar, 17 grams of protein, you're, you're going to take that trade every single day. Uh, like I said, the 100% real chocolate makes them delicious, and you get great flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond, and you don't have to wait around anymore for your delivery to show up. I'm going to be honest, built.com. You would order them there, and you might not see them for uh, another two weeks, like it took some time. Now you don't have to worry about it anymore because now they're available at your local Walmart or Sam's Club, whichever one's easiest for you. If you're going to Walmart, you go to the pharmacy section, you get the four-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. At Sam's Club, obviously, they do things a little bit bigger at Sam's, so 13-bar box with the hit flavors, brownie batter, and churro. I've heard nothing but great things about the churro. Haven't had them yet myself. I'm always peanut butter brownie. It's my go-to, but churro, I hear, is really, really good. And uh, they've also got a new product that I saw at Built.com, which is the new mint brownie puffs. So if you haven't tried those yet, you might want to get in on it before they're all gone because that's what happens with some of these new flavors. They're here for a little bit, and then they vanish for a while. And then you got to wait around for them to come back. So don't miss out. If you want to try them, new mint brownie puffs or any of the delicious flavors that they have, visit them today at Built.com.
All right. So uh, on the YouTube videos, I always leave like a question. And of course, we get comments and you can talk about anything you want in the comments section on our YouTube videos whenever you want. Totally fine there. Just, uh, you know, be courteous and don't be a jerk. And we haven't really had any of those problems ever. So I feel like I don't even have to say that. But you never know. You never know. And so some guy, some Cubs fan might come roaming it. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Um, but anyway, so I had a couple questions for you in our videos this past week. One of them was choosing between Jake Woodford or Dakota Hudson. Which one do you put on the roster? Which one do you send down to AAA? And a lot of people are here took Woodford, which I agree with. He's had a great spring. Uh, Dylan writes, Woodford deserves a spot in the pen. My biggest concern with him has always been him pitching to a lineup for the second and third time. A two to three inning reliever, I think, is the best way to utilize him. And that might be exactly what they do, Dylan. It really is. There's nothing available in the rotation right now, but he could be that sixth guy, the guy that we thought that Dakota Hudson was going to be. And um, if Woodford makes it and Hudson has to get sent down because he's not pitching enough, so be it. Um, I trust Woodford. Here's my thing with Woodford over Hudson is that I trust Jake Woodford to come in and throw strikes. I don't feel like Woodford's going to come in and start walking people. I don't have that anxiety about the walks as I do with Dakota Hudson, who you never know. He could come in and walk the first three people you see, and then he starts controlling the sinker better and then gets a double play and gets out of it. But I don't want to be put in those hectic situations with my relief pitcher. So um, I'm keeping Woodford sitting Hudson down. I'm not riding Hudson off by any means, but he could be a part of a, a very good rotation down there in Memphis because uh, there's some good prospects who are down there. Um, Jack Flaherty and Steven Matz both coming off injury plague seasons. I asked you guys, who do you trust more coming into the year? And this was after their their first uh, pitching appearances of the spring. They've now each had two. Uh, M. New what is it? M. Newland 67 says, I trust Jack simply because I've seen him and seen what he can do, not really seen Matt's much, which is a, a fair thing to say because unless you followed Steven Matt's when he was with the Mets or when he was with Toronto, you wouldn't be all that too familiar with him. So um, my opinion on this, I, Matt's has looked better. I give the nod to Matt so far coming into the spring, but uh, Flaherty hasn't looked too shabby either. I've, I've been very pleased with uh, the way both of them have looked on the mound. And key thing there, they're both healthy still. Bird Chatter says on this uh, question, Matt's, but both should rock out and be all-stars. Number one and number two, and then Miles, number three, Wayne Montgomery, number four. Hicks Hudson are okay at number five, but we could lose a few to get one better, which I, I think he's suggesting that they they trade. Or I said she, she, I don't know. Bird chatter, it could be a guy or a girl. Um, I will say this about that. I truly hope we've seen the end of the experiment of one Jordan Hicks becoming a, a starting pitcher. I hated the idea when I heard it last year, and then he came in and he wasn't any good at it. It didn't work out. Hicks is just a guy that if he could if he could just throw strikes, which I know is easier said than done, especially with the movement that he features, you know, he's throwing sinkers at 102 miles an hour. They're going to get away from him from time to time, which is unfortunate. But if he could, if he could, if he could just get that over the zone a little bit more, what a force he could be. But it's maddening as well, watching Jordan Hicks pitch from time to time. Um, I also asked about your thoughts on the backup catching role. Are you comfortable with Andrew Kisner or do you want to try someone new? Ron Fontenot says Kisner is good with Wainwright, so he will be around for 2023. I met Kisner a few years ago at winter warmup, and he's a very personable person. I can see why players in the clubhouse like him. Uh, Ron, thank you for the comment. And I think that's what's going to keep Andrew Kisner on this team. His familiarity with the staff and, uh, you know, with the team in the clubhouse, it seems like he's one of the guys, you know, he seems to get along with everybody, but Lord knows it's not because he's been hitting it all this spring because he hasn't hit a lick. Andrew Kisner is now batting 56, 56 in Grapefruit League action. He's one for 18. Thing is, it's not like any of these other guys who are competing with the backup catching job, uh, they're not lighting it up either. So Andrew Kisner, I think he's on this team. I can't see why he wouldn't make it. Uh, quickly, some news and notes. Cardinals right-handers Gordon Graceffo, Michael McGreevy, your number four, number eight-ranked prospects in the system. Uh, among the seven players cut from the MLB camp roster on Saturday. Uh, they both had tough outings their last time out. And 
let's be honest, we never expected them to make the roster. So uh, once again, sit them down. Could be a part of a mighty fine rotation at Memphis if you have Graceffo, McGreevy, uh, Libertor, Woodford or Hudson, whoever it might be, Connor Thomas. Pretty good starting five for your AAA team. So not too shabby at all there. Uh, also, infielder Jose Fermin, who missed the past week with a quad strain. He got assigned to the AAA Memphis roster, along with right-handed reliever Jake Walsh. All right, real quick, if you haven't seen the interview with uh, Cardinals number 29 prospect Victor Scott II, which I did last week, I encourage you to go check that out. Cool guy who had a terrible connection. They have god-awful internet at the camp that he's at at the Cardinals complex. Cardinals, come on. Can, can we pump it up to 5Gs? For the prospects so they can get on their phone and do interviews with us but guy i'm rooting for seems like he's got a good head on his shoulders uh was willing to to put in the work to uh, get to the major leagues and was a really nice dude so if you haven't seen that interview yet i know it's a little long it's like 30 minutes but it's worth it all right go go see what victor scott the second is all about show him some love all right, thanks for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen. Now for your second listen, check out Locked On Fantasy Baseball. Win your league by listening to Matt and Dom every day as they bring you the best fantasy draft strategy. It's Locked On Fantasy Baseball. You can find it wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. If you don't follow us on Twitter yet, please do that. LO underscore Cardinals and Edge 80 Sports Radio. Like and subscribe on YouTube. We are pushing towards 5,000 subscribers. We're trying to get there before opening day. So if you have a moment, please like button, tap that little notification button, subscribe. Very quick. You, you It takes two seconds to do all that. You're the best fans in baseball for a reason. I'll see you next time on Locked on Cardinals.